He's Lewis. He's Booger. I'm Gilbert. She's Betty. No, that ain't it. This is not Revenge of the Nerds. This is Vikings Report with Drew, Ted, and Chris. Gentlemen, how are you? Come on, rise and shine. How are you feeling after 2-0, and boys? It feels pretty darn good, man. I don't think uh, I don't think a whole lot of us expected to be 2-0. and I mean, uh, Drew and I didn't expect us to be 2-0, and but Ted did, so... Uh, Who called it? Yeah. yeah Ted, called, Ted it? called it, but yeah, uh, yeah 2-0 and is, uh, is a whole lot better than 1-1, one and, one, and it's definitely a whole lot better than 0-2, so... 1, 2, and 0, oh, baby! <laughs> it's definitely not the start we had last year. I'm not only fired up on the 2-0, and I'm fired up on how the team looks. It wasn't a lucky 2-0. and We are right there. I mean, they kind of trounced the Niners. You can't say it was turnovers or anything. They were even on turnovers. The Vikings' game plan and their play has been great the first two weeks, and this is going to be the big test. The 49ers did not lose that game. The Vikings were not lucky. They took the lead early. They never trailed. Aaron Jones not fumbled on the goal line. They'd have yep. won going away. It was about as convincing a one-score win as you can get. Drew, you said this week will be the big test. I'm not disagreeing, but last week was a big test, too. Everybody said, well, they don't stand a chance against defending NFC champs. And last week, you know, week one, it was just the Giants. I'm telling you, this team is for real. But we'll talk about that as we go on during the show. Looking forward to breaking down this Texans matchup. I yeah. did a lot of research on their team today, and I think they're a little bit better than the 49ers. But... Vikings play the way they did. They can take anybody down. Yeah. Yep. Ruby's out there somewhere. She's not feeling great. So, hi, Ruby. I hope you feel better. But thanks for uh, uh, putting up with with our shenanigans. <laughs> I want to see you and the other girls in the locker room now. So, this is about the time of the show we do our Nobody Cares About Your Fantasy Team. Week one, I was kind of feeling my oats a little bit. I was humbled last week. I finished last. I do believe. Who was our, who was our winner? Uh, for Nobody Cares About Your Fantasy Team last week, Drew? Our winner was Toonces. Chris had a 36-point lead going into Monday night, but she had Hertz, Bijan Robinson, and that put her over the top at 75. So she got first, Chris got second, I got third, and you went Ryan Day on us. I finished first like Ryan Day in his first year, and I finished fourth like Ryan Day is now. So I don't know what I want to do. Anyways, we got three people at the top of the standings right now, including the great Reggie Adams. Yeah. Oh, boy. And if you look at the scores this year, it's a little bit different than in years past because we've changed the scoring system this year. And it's all explained in the video that Ruby's going to play right now. So hit Ruby. As always, it is a standard PPR scoring format. Every week this year, Drew, Chris, Ruby, and I will pick one quarterback, one running back, two wide receivers, and one tight end. Every week you will pick the team you think has the best chance of winning. Put your entry in the comments below here. Don't hit us up on our Facebook page. Don't hit us up on X or Twitter or whatever Elon Musk is calling it. Every time we pick a player, we can only pick that player one time throughout the course of the season. So it's done. So if we don't pick a player and that player gets hurt for the season, too bad for us. We can't use them. We don't know the picks beforehand when we send the picks in. And we don't pick the players that are playing on the Thursday night game because that might give one team that you folks might pick sort of an unfair advantage in case they go off and get like 40 or 50 points or whatever the case may be. The big change to this year. In years past, we've given you three points for first place, two points for second place, one point for third. This year, you get all the points that you would get in a standard PPR format week if you play fantasy football. So, for example, if you pick my team and I score 75 points in one week, and then you pick Chris's team and they score 75 points in week two, you have 150 points throughout two weeks. And that keeps going throughout the season. Conversely, if you pick, like, Drew's team and they only score 10 points, and then Ruby's team and they score, like, 300 points, then you have 310 points. It gives you a chance to catch up if you kind of fall behind. Whereas in past seasons, if you weren't doing so well, it was kind of hard to catch up. So this year you can kind of fall back in the pack pretty fast. So standard PPR scoring format all season and you accrue points throughout the year. You can find the leaderboard throughout the season on VikingsReport.com. Ruby will keep that updated for us. And we've got a really awesome prize for our grand prize winner this year. It is a Justin Jefferson jersey. Put it up on the board for our championship. Second place 
is a nice Stephon Diggs Vikings jersey as well. All right, so that's nobody cares about your fantasy team. Again, put who you think has got the best fantasy team this week down below in the comments. May the best person win. And this week it's going to be me because I've got a great team. I jinx myself again. I, I do that every week. <laughs> we got a great show tonight. Before we get going, we want to talk about Purple Paint Forums, purplepaintforums.com, our home away from home on the internet. Great community. None of the crap you see on social media with infighting and insults and you see on Facebook, just go over to Purple Pain Forums, sign up for an account, start commenting. It's a great group of folks, purplepainforums.com. If you want to get your news and information about the Minnesota Vikings, go over to my friend Chris's site, right right there, Daily Norseman, the Daily Norseman, dailynorseman.com. Took the site up in 2006. It's now part of the SB Nation network of sports blogs, dailynorseman.com. Everything you ever wanted to know about the Minnesota Vikings but were afraid to ask, you can find on the Daily Norseman, dailynorseman.com. He's a man of he wears many hats. Master of all trades, jack of none, or something like that. I don't know. I don't think we have a hat in the prize vault that fits that dome, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do have my Jared Allen mullet around here somewhere, though. I can still slap that bad boy on. All right, look, we got a lot of show to cover tonight. We got a whole bunch of Vikings news and information. We got our preview. But, yeah. Drew, before that, my friend, what time is it? Ted? Yeah? I'm cooler than you are. So why don't you channel your inner nerd and light this candle? He's right. Why don't you light this candle? He surely is. Let's go ahead and light this candle. Nerds! All right, I'm cooler than you are. Why don't you fix your little problems and light this candle? He's right. Let's light this candle. He surely is. Light the candle. Yes. Resume the countdown. Nerds! <laughs> <laughs> How many of those nerd movies do they make? Four or five or something? I don't know. What was made more, that or the Police Academy movies? I think there's more Police Academy movies than uh, <laughs> Revenge of the Nerds movies, but I think I'm in a slightly different boat than you guys are when it comes to that movie, because uh, looking at the year it came out, I was seven years old when Revenge of the Nerds came out, so... I damn wow. sure didn't see it in the theaters. It was one of those movies that would only come on HBO after a certain time of the evening. So uh, <laughs> so if you wanted to watch it, you had to have the volume down real low on that TV and make sure that uh, make sure that the old parental units didn't know you were down there watching it. Because, uh, yeah, it was not the kind of movie they would have approved of a seven-year-old watching. What year was that? 1984. Yeah, I would have turned eight in September of that year. Senior in high school. I was 19. That was my blood alcohol count, too, every day. <laughs> like, after that, though, the sequels were just, they, they sucked. Yeah, most of the time, sequels are, unless yeah. you're Alien, Terminator. Yeah. Alien, true. Terminator. Yeah, true. Godfather. Godfather. But we will all agree that Godfather 3 was an abomination and does not exist. It never Please. happened. Like right. like Rocky Five. Nerds! Nerds. Nerds. Nerds! God, there's, there's so many revenge narratives going on. It's like a soap opera, isn't it? Case Keenum, but he's on IR, the quarterback that took the Vikings to their last NFC championship appearance that Mike Zimmer hated. There's Daniil Hunter, starting defensive end. To Stephon Diggs, who was traded from Buffalo to the Houston, Texas, that provided quite possibly the greatest single individual play in Minnesota Vikings history, the Minneapolis Miracle, that got to the Vikings to set NFC championship in 2017. And I know I'm missing a couple other players. Chris, help me out here. Cam Akers is there Cam after oh, yeah, he uh, Cam Akers, yeah. blew out his Achilles last year, and the Vikings yeah. didn't want him back, so he uh, made his way to Houston. And uh, I'll leave the last one to Drew because uh, he's the one who uh, who saw this earlier. So no, there's two more. There was oh, there one are more. two more. Oh yeah. Oh, Chris, Chris Boyd. Boyd. Yeah, Chris Boyd. He of the eight thousand special teams penalties, according to Mike Zimmer. Chris Boyd, who was eviscerated in that Zimmer interview by the dude from the Star Tribune, Craig. Uh... Mark Craig? Mark Craig, yeah, Mark Craig, yeah. B-O-Y-D, balls on your dome. He was number five, and number six just got signed today. We're recording on Wednesday. Irv Smith Jr. went to the practice squad as they put Brevin Jordan on IR. So that's wow. six different Vikings. And now the former Texans that are on the Minnesota Vikings, Blake Cashman, right? Yeah. Right. 
Jonathan Grenard. Who else? I believe that's it. I think that's it. Okay. Yeah, just All those right. two guys. All right. So a lot of revenge going on this week. A lot of revenge. And there's probably more for the Texans as the Texans and Vikings have played each other five or six times. And the Texans has never beaten Minnesota Vikings. Oh, they no. haven't? Ever. Not once. Oh, wow. Never, wow. ever. So, yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, one more on the uh, the Vikings oh. roster. Oh. Uh, Shaq Griffin played for the Texans last oh, year. Oh, that's, that's right. He did. Yeah, while. that's right. I totally forgot about that's that. Right. Yeah. So, the Vikings and the Texans essentially traded rosters last year. And both are 2-0. and Both have started 2-0. and The Vikings and the Texans for the first time for both teams since 2016. Really? That's one of my tasty, tasty tidbits. Eight years for both teams since they started 2-0. and Did the Texans go to the playoffs that year? Because I know the Vikings didn't. I do uh, not know. Because 2016 was the year the entire Minnesota Vikings team got killed in an ambush in frickin' Iraq. I mean, like, they were, like, that was the year Jake Long had to come out of retirement and play. And within two weeks, right. he was the best offensive lineman on the team. And then he got his leg shot off in an ambush in the Da Nang province or something. My God. It was just, it was horrible. In, in 2016, the uh, the Texans did make the playoffs. They won the AFC South with a uh, blistering 9-7 and seven mark. <laughs> so they uh, they did make it. They did win a playoff game that year, too. So You guys remember like three or four years ago, the Texans were terrible. They were two years ago. 2022, they were like 2-14 and 14 or something like that. And everyone griped about the Houston Texans because they went out the last week of the season when they were fighting for the number one pick and rather than just you know roll over or whatever lovey smith who was coaching the texans at the time took them and won yep that last week i think they played indianapolis but i can't remember off the top of my head but yeah that that gave them the number two pick and carolina wound up at number one and uh because the carolina panthers owner is an idiot they took bryce young instead of cj stroud at number one overall and cj stroud wound up with houston and uh yeah, I think if the roles are reversed there, I don't. Uh, I mean, I don't know if Bryce Young would be getting ready to get benched in Houston already, but uh, I don't think Houston would have turned it around quite that quickly with Bryce Young at quarterback. So tanking yeah. is never actually the answer. And that's what we can learn from that. While we're talking about records, we'll get to Vikings news and info in a second here. We always talk about how important it is to start with a good record, at least one and one. You can't start zero two, and we've talked about this the last two or three years because the Vikings have always started slow. They started right. on, I think, was 0 and 4 last year, wasn't it? Yeah, 1 and 4, because they won that game in Carolina in the middle. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you start 0 and 2, you don't go to the playoffs. You just don't. And, and the Vikings started 0 and 2 last year. Since the NFL expanded to 17 games in 2021, only two teams that started 0 and 2 have made the playoffs Houston last year, believe it or not, and then Cincinnati in 2022. 75% of the time in the 17 game season, you're going to make the playoffs. If you start one and one, it's a crapshoot, almost 50-50, like 45%. Now, does this mean the Vikings are going to make the playoffs? No, it does not. There's a lot of football left to be played, and the Vikings are already dealing with some injuries, which we'll talk about. But I'll tell you what, winning that 49ers game and winning the first game of the week against the Giants, those are both conference wins, and that is going to come in huge later in the season when we're starting to talk about if the Vikings can continue to win and, and stay in the playoff hunt. That is going to come in huge when we're talking tiebreakers and all that because conference wins is a big part of the tiebreaker system Drew. so i don't know i think this 2-0 start a is not a fluke but b it's important to start off fast because you don't have a whole lot of time to make up losses and and once you start chasing losses it's hard to make up ground you don't want to be chasing the loss column you don't and and it's like uh being prepared and ready to go that makes a huge difference just like you said the vikings they seem to have a different attitude we talk about you want to beat the teams you're supposed to beat. Somewhere along the line, the course of a season, you're going to lose one you should have won. And same difference, you're going to win one that you should have lost. And that might be the Niner game already. Maybe. And it might be the Texan game this Sunday. Build up credit because you know there's going to be down weeks. It's football. The wicked, wicked mistress. You could be a 20-point favorite and lose. You never know. Big difference this year, Ted, is they're not beating themselves like they were at the beginning of last year. Yep. And when they're making mistakes like the ham fumble, or the Jones fumble, they're not letting it beat them because they've made, what, four turnovers the first two games, but yep. Yep. big difference when you don't let it affect you. And I think the play calling for Kevin O'Connell is a lot better than it was last year. And Chris, you know, Drew mentioned the turnovers, but 
Last year, the turnovers sort of compounded on themselves, and I think after three or four games, I think the Vikings had a turnover on the opening drive in each of the first three or four games, and their turnover margin got to be minus five or minus six pretty quick. And and although they've had those really bad turnovers, their turnover margin right now is at zero. So they've made up those turnovers. Sure. Yeah, I mean, they're they're forcing turnovers, and you know they, they've lost two fumbles. Uh, Sam Darnold's thrown two interceptions, but... Yeah, they, they had a, a pick and a fumble recovery against the Niners, and they picked off Daniel Jones twice. So, yeah, it's all evened out so far. But, yeah, they're, they're not letting the turnovers really hurt them. I mean, the, the ham fumble against the Giants set the Giants up at, like, the 20-yard line, and they only managed three points. I mean, they did take the Aaron Jones fumble in March, uh, you know, 98 or 99 yards down the field. But, you know, that that's the exception so far. That's not the rule. So that, that's totally acceptable. But at each one of those events, Drew, like you said, those are moments as a Vikings fan, you think, oh, here we go. When Jones fumbled and then the 49ers went 99 yards, I thought, well, here it comes. Bohica, bend over, here it comes again. <laughs> to the Vikings' credit, they engineered that dagger drive. Sam Darnold engineered that, what, six- or seven-minute drive that got them that field goal that put the game out of reach that early turnover by ham didn't matter. They only kicked the field goal and, and the Vikings drove down the field, got a touchdown and, and took the lead and, and never relinquished it again. I mean, this team is, it's only two games, but it's kind of starting to feel different from past teams. It does feel a lot different. And like Bill Parcell said, it's not the turnovers. It's how you respond to the turnovers. All right. So some news in Sunday's game against San Francisco on the very same play, both Justin Jefferson and Nick Bosa went down. We don't care about Nick Bosa. Well, I mean, we care. I mean, we don't want him to be hurt long term his career to be over, but we care more about Justin Jefferson because he's on the Vikings. He had a quad injury. It looks like he's going to play this weekend. The Vikings are being more cautious with Jordan Addison. We're recording on a Wednesday. He did not practice. Brian O'Neill did not practice. Dallas Turner hurt his knee on Sunday as well. And he did not practice. And I think the Vikings feels like they're being a little bit more cautious with Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner is a loss, and I don't want him to miss any games, obviously. But with the way the defense is playing, Chris, right now, Dallas Turner feels like a loss. The Vikings can absorb more easily than, obviously, Jordan Addison or Justin Jefferson because that defensive front seven just seems sick with depth right now. It sure does. I mean, you know, we, we've talked about Grenard. Uh, we've talked about Van Ginkle. We've talked about you know Patrick Jones, who uh, who currently leads the Vikings in sacks, which you wouldn't have gotten anybody to bet on after the first two weeks uh, going into the season. But with what Brian Flores is doing, Dallas Turner, I don't want to say he's a luxury at this point, but like you said, they can more easily absorb his loss uh, than they could one of their receivers or at some other spots. Hopefully, it won't be anything too serious with Dallas Turner, and they're just being extra cautious. But we'll see how that develops and I think it goes back to the depth the Vikings have gotten on their roster now I mean that last drive we were just talking about his primary skill guys were for the most part Ty Chandler at running back Brandon Powell Jalen Naylor for his two wide receivers and then Johnny Munt uh, at tight end kind of seems that way I mean you know Josh Oliver is not TJ Hawkinson and Johnny Munt is not TJ Hawkinson and Nick Muse isn't and you know, they've got Robert Tunyon and Trey Knox on the practice squad. Those guys aren't on that level. So, yeah, we're, we're just going to kind of ignore the tight end position for the next couple of weeks until uh, Hawkinson finally makes his way back, I guess. Kind of surprised they didn't activate a guy like Tanyan off the practice squad. I don't get it. Maybe he was hurt or something during training camp, but I really thought he was starting to, to show some Hawkinson-like ability. It was, what, two or three years ago in Green Bay when he, like, later in the season, he, he tore his ACL, I think it was. I don't know. I, I think the Vikings need more production out of the tight end spot until TJ Hawkinson gets back. Right now, Munt and Oliver are the only two tight ends on the roster. They got to do something. They threw that three-yard pass to Munt or whatever during the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He caught the pass. I seen his number. I had no idea who. I thought it was Car Lester Crumpler. Carl Lester Crumpler. <laughs> I didn't know who it was. I, is that Steve Voigt? Who is that guy? Andrew Glover is offended by that comment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other news we want to cover? Injuries for the uh, Texans. Yeah. They got a big problem with injuries, I think. They do. Yeah. Good point. Joe Mixon. Think he's going to play? No. Probably not. And his backup, primary backup, his name escapes you right at the moment. Damian, Damian Pierce. Pierce. 
There you go, Damian Pierce. I think he's hurt too. Very questionable right now. Did not play against the Bears. Yeah. And he and Mixon on Wednesday today did not practice either one of them. They might be down to Cam Akers and the great Dare Ogunbowale, Ted. What are your favorite? I like Cam Akers. Every time Cam Akers touched the ball on Sunday night football against the Bears, it seemed to me he got five or six yards. I know he's coming off an Achilles injury. If Cam Akers starts, he's the guy the Vikings better game plan for. I mean, when he was with the Vikings last year, up until a point he blew out his Achilles, I think it was the Falcons game, he was a good player. He was the best running back on the field when they weren't using Ty Chandler and Alexander Madison was still the starter. Akers is a guy I wouldn't overlook if I was – Brian Flores, and I, I don't think he will, but that's just me. No, I don't think he no. will. I mean, we know we know Akers is solid, but, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have to see what they do because they, they can't just have him out there. So, yeah, we'll see how the Texans handle that. It's a step down from having Pierce and Mixon, yes. and what I'm saying is that hurts game planning for Stroud. To open up that amazing passing game they got, they got to run the football. If the Vikings take Akers out of the game, Stroud is going to have a hell of a time moving that ball if they, if they double-team Collins. That's what I'm saying. Offensively, they could have some problems here. Very fair. Yeah. All right. So that's Vikings news and information. I'm going Vikings on the whole thing, and here's the tidbit I've been sitting on. Oh. We talk about. Penalties and turnovers on this show for years and yet how the big difference. People are probably sick of hearing it. Drew, we know penalties, turnovers, you base a lot of your thought off that. Third down conversions, time of possession. Inside the numbers that we look at at Gallahorn, I, I look at all that, come up with my conclusion in my brain. Football's not difficult. It comes down to a certain amount of stats. I got one. Kevin O'Connell, since he's been coach of the Vikings, the Vikings are 19-0. and 0. When he wins the turnover battle or ties it, that really? is a tasty freaking tidbit. 19 yep, really? and oh, That's what I'm talking about when I say that turnovers matter. 19 and oh, baby. That's good. Saw that today by my Viking buddy, and I thought, that's a great tidbit right there. On that, I think the Vikings get this. They're going to give Stroud problems. I think the running game is going to cause Texans to have problems, having those two guys may possibly not play. Stroud is not going to be able to deal with Flores. The Vikings are on a high right now. They're at home. If this was in Texas, I'd probably give them the nod. But like you said, Ted, what do they do their first two games? Their 2-0 is not as good as our 2-0. No, I don't think it is either. I think it's going to come down to which front seven uh, holds up the best against uh, the opposing team's offensive line. And right now, I think we all gave the front seven check mark to the Vikings. So... Yeah, I, I think uh, Brian Flores, as Drew said a couple times, is going to have a, uh, a few surprises for Mr. Stroud that he hasn't seen previously. I think this leans toward the Vikings. I think it's going to be a, a, a 3-0 and start. Sam Darnold's having a career revival in Minnesota, thanks in large part due to Kevin O'Connell and his belief in Sam. I don't know if you saw the postgame press conference after the 49ers win. Kevin O'Connell got kind of emotional about how Sam's been playing and how the team has embraced him and how he has embraced the team. There's a vibe, and and I don't know if you saw the post-game locker room celebration before O'Connell gave out the game balls and all that, and he had his little post-game speech. They were vibing to 50 Cent, man. And, like, all the African-American dudes were just, like, jamming to 50 Cent, and all the white dudes were, like, just kind of going, yeah, we don't know the words, but yeah, okay. It was, it was funny. It was cool. Well, I mean, we've gone from Creed to 50 Cent in less than 12 months. And last year was kind of different because they were having to come back from like the one and four start and they got the four and four and then Kirk blew out his Achilles. And it, it was kind of a different, okay, we can get back to where we were. This is different. This just feels different. Like last year, the Vikings thought, well, we think we're good and we can, if we can overcome these mistakes, we'll be okay. This year it's, we know we're good and we know we're going to come out and we're going to kick your ass. And I think this Sunday, they're going to kick Houston's ass. The only thing that worries me is if Stroud gets out of the pocket and he can find Nico Collins, they, they can make that magic because that that's going to be me. tough to stop. That worries me a lot. If they can do that, it's game on. All right, that's it. We got to get out of here. For Drew, for Chris, I'm Ted. We'll see you Sunday live after the Vikings-Texas game right here on our YouTube channel. Take care, folks. <laughs> Nailer. Nerd! <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Parents as good as you.